Welcome to another Model A mini guide. Today, I'll show you what can happen when your point gap is set too small. You can wind up with burned points. So a couple days ago, I was uh, driving the coupe and whenever I would slow down to an idle, it would start lurching forward. And like, vroom, 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 vroom. Uh, this behavior is also called bucking or surging. Now, surging can have a lot of root causes, but if it only happens at low RPM and only when the engine's in gear, the most likely culprit, it's not your carb, it's not your spark plugs, it is right in there. It's your point gap. Often the point gap has closed up below the minimum of, zero, of 0 0.018 inches. So I popped off the distributor body to check the point gap and I noticed there was more going on than just the point gap. So let's take a look. Here is the upper plate out of that distributor. And the thing that you notice right away here is that the point block and arm are not properly aligned. So instead of meeting parallel, the points contacts meet at an angle. Uh, and actually, I don't know if you can see, but it's just kind of generally askew. They really don't line up properly at all. There's, even when they meet, there's a ton of space between them. See how they only meet at like the corner, that corner right there? So this is actually gonna make arcing more likely. And it also just makes it hard to set the point gap accurately. And in fact, if you look closely, so you see that, see that dot right there? So there's a dot on that one. And then you can see there's a lot of, yep. Yeah, so there is, both of the point contacts are burned. So I have to do two things before I can set the point gap. I've got to clean the points and then I've got to realign this point block so that they meet properly. Um, so since I have to mess with the point block, I'm just going to go ahead and take it off. Uh, that'll make it easier to clean the point contacts on each side. So that's these two screws uh, and these will need to be removed. Now I've heard a couple dozen different ways to clean points. Uh, my favorite one is probably just uh, dragging a dollar bill between them. But when you have visible damage like this, you need to use a dedicated tool. And that is an ignition points file. Now these cost $3 and they will last the rest of your life. So what I'm gonna do now is file the damaged bits off and make sure each side is as flat as possible. So I've done a few passes and you can really see now that there are three pits here. So we've got to continue filing until these pits are gone. All right, so I've got these pretty well cleaned up. Um, this one, the point block took a while. Um, you can see there's still the tiny remnants of those pits right there. There were three of them. Um, and one thing that is interesting from an electrical engineering point of view is that the point block had pits on it, and it was it was hard to tell, but when I got in the air, I could see that the uh, point arm had a, a bump on it. So sometimes this is called a spike and crater uh, that you get from an electrical arc. And the way, what happens is there's actually material that is being uh, vaporized off of the point block, this contact, by the arc and it's being deposited over here. And that's why you get the pit and the bump over here. And um, the way it works is that material is always transferred to the anode. So, right, you've got, um, elect you've, these are the electrodes, right? And uh, this is the anode and this is the cathode. And material is always transferred to the anode. Um, and that's what we had here. Uh, the the point arm is the anode because current is flowing out of it. Uh, there's a mnemonic, ACID, uh, anode current into device. And so uh, if you remember how a distributor is put together, current is flowing from um, 
the ignition uh, cable uh, down into the lower plate and then to the uh, up the pigtail and into the um, the arm here and then across to the point block where it grounds and goes back to the chassis. So you are seeing a very classic electrical arc where uh, material was being deposited here because that's where the current's coming from and it's going into the ground here where there are pits. But anyway, long story short, got this cleaned up about as well as I could. You can still see little these little pits here, but I, I think it'll be okay uh, if I can get the uh, point block properly aligned. I don't think they'll cause any damage. So time to put everything back together. We've got everything reassembled and the upper plate is back in the distributor on the car. And this is a good time and place to set the point gap. Uh, so the most precise way to do this while the distributor is in the car is with a dial indicator. So what you do is you get a magnetic base and it seems to work um, positioned on the exhaust manifold right here. Uh, and then you get the dial indicator mounted so that the point arm is going to push on the plunger. And then you can see as I rotate the cam, the plunger is gonna indicate where the high point of the cam is. So you're gonna just get to that high point right there. And then you tighten down the cam. Now remember, you're not actually tightening down the cam for timing purposes. You're just tightening it so it doesn't go anywhere while you're adjusting your point gap. Uh, now, I like to set my gap on the wider side, 0.022 inches, and the reason for that is that the gap tends to close over time as the uh, rubbing block wears. One other note that I forgot to mention, this is a great time to check to make sure that your cam is symmetric. So turn it through and see we got to 40. Now I'll keep turning it. Got to 40. Got to 40. Yeah, just looks like it's just over 40. Yeah, so they're all the same. So that's a good cam. Uh, if you get different numbers, then uh, that is not a good cam and you need to swap it out with one that's symmetric. I, I don't think you're gonna have probably much luck evening them out uh, yourself unless uh, you're a pretty skilled machinist.